Who's my favorite student? Anne. So, dropped, VI is zero, and we're in free fall, ignoring air resistance, so pineal A is going to be negative 9.8. One G has a magnitude, somebody asked me, when is G negative and when was G positive? One G has a magnitude of 9.8, so if I'm trying to figure out how many Gs I'm pulling, I just divide by positive 9.8 because that's the magnitude, but if we're analyzing something with vectors and direction, free fall, I'll usually call down negative, and so then it'll have a negative 9.8. Next unit, which is just around the corner, we're going to abandon always letting down be negative because, let me pause the video for a second. Ask me to find in part A. Yeah, it's at how high, and then I need to realize height is distance. And by the way, it's technically displacement we're finding because if we end up above from where we started, we'll get a positive answer. But if we end up below from where we started, we'll get a negative answer. So. Peniel, I'm going to write D equals question mark. Have I written something down? Do I feel better? Am I more relaxed? That, that's a big part of my strategy, and you're going to see that all the time. What I try and do is build a domino chain in your head so that as soon as you ask a certain question, oh, I do this. The rest of it is on, you're on your own, but if I can at least get that first step, then I'm hoping the rest of the dominoes will fall into place. Dropped. What did we say dropped tells us? VI is zero. A is negative 9.8, and it looks like they gave me time, 18.5. So I'm looking for an equation that has a D, a VI, an A, and a T in it. There's only one. It's D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Why didn't I bother writing the VIT? And again, if you write it, I'm not taking marks off, but I want you to always just be alert and aware and notice special exceptions, and I'm naturally lazy. It's less writing. So it's going to be negative 9.8 times 18.5 squared all over 2. Am I expecting a positive answer or a negative displacement here? I'm ending up above or below from where I started. So if I get a negative, will I freak out? No, no, I'll relax. Uh, 18 seconds of free fall is a long time. This is going to be big. Uh, to give you an example, when I jumped out of an airplane, when I jumped out of an airplane, when I jumped out of an airplane, I was in free fall for maybe 30 seconds. So this is going to be a fairly high cliff. Did you get negative 1,677? So I'll call it negative 1,680. What are the units for distance? Yeah. What's a dumb way to remember that? I measure distance with a meter stick. Is honestly what my brain does. Now, if you didn't put the negative, because I said height, you're going to learn later on that height is technically a scalar. And so if we don't say that building is negative 1,680 meters high, we say it's positive one. Good morning, my joy. I'm so glad you made it. Uh, we're marking the take-home quiz from a couple of days ago. It's quiz three. If you haven't finished it, I'll get it for you later. <clears throat> um, so if you didn't put the negative, I'm fine with that. But for what it's worth, you can leave it there. Two marks. If you got it right, two out of two, no matter how much work you showed. Otherwise, I would give you one mark if I saw that, half mark for the numbers, and a half mark for the answer. Are you noticing a bit of a pattern or a bit of a trend? Part marks. Yes? I would take that. If you had said negative 1,670, I would say to you, learn to round off. We round off. We don't chop off. And I would give you the stink eye. Yes, one of my peeves is when people don't actually analyze their answer and round off properly. What's the impact velocity? I guess that's VF. Mr. Duick, isn't the impact velocity zero? How do I know? If you do a belly flop onto the cement off of a table, I assure you it will hurt when you hit the ground. If V final was zero, it wouldn't hurt when you hit the ground. After you hit the ground, when the ground has brought you to a stop, sure, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, I'm not going to relist everything, Peniel, because I think it's the same situation. I could use D, but I'll try and avoid using D if I can. I think I can use 
VF equals VI plus AT. Why didn't I bother writing VI? Because VI is equal to? Yeah, lazy, right? So it's going to be negative 9.8 times 18.5. When we hit the ground, what direction are we traveling? Upwards or downwards? If you don't have the quiz, let me know. I think you do, but give me a holler if you can't find it. Uh, down, so I'm expecting a positive or a negative answer here. So if I get a negative, will I freak? No, I'll relax. And I get negative 181.3. I'll go to three sig figs and call it negative 181 meters per second. But if you said negative 181.3, I'm fine with that. And again, one mark for the equation, half mark for the numbers, half mark for the answer. What I'm really saying, by the way, Deegan, is if you can at least just find the equation, you can pass my test, even if you can't solve anything. To me, the, the process and the setup is far more important than actually getting the final answer. That's, to me, kind of trivial. I want to see, can I get you understanding how it all fits together? Okay. By the way, is acceleration due to gravity on the moon bigger or smaller? So if this was on the moon, would your final velocity, your impact velocity, be bigger or smaller? That's why when we did the moon landing, the lunar lander could have a much smaller rocket engine than the big one that left the Earth. That was a big plus. Otherwise, there's no way we can do it. Hashtag nerd trivia. Peniel, what's this 3.4 with the seconds a measure of? Time. Things have changed because previously it was 18.5 seconds. Now how many seconds? I'm going to relist my data. I'm going to defic again. It wants the velocity. I think that's a V. Oh, change colors, Mr. Duick. I think that's a V final. Did you find it? Okay. If you didn't do it, just follow along and finish it later. Um, a is still negative 9.8 because we're in free fall. And we're still dropped. But this time, T is 3.4 seconds. I can make some predictions. We haven't fallen as far. We'll get a smaller magnitude answer than negative 181. It's going to be, it looks like the same equation. Why don't I change colors, Mr. Duick? Stay red. VF equals AT. It's going to be negative 9.8 times 3.4. What's the negative telling me? Which way am I traveling? Down. By the way, if we, and maybe I did a question like this later in the quiz, if you throw something up on the way up, you'll get a positive velocity. And so if you get a positive answer, you know, oh, we haven't reached the top yet. How fast would you be traveling at the top for a split second? Zero, that's handy to have in your back pocket. And then when you're on the way down, you'll get a negative velocity again. Uh, I got negative 9.8 times 3.4, uh, 30, negative 33.3. Yes? Meters per second. Again, half mark, half mark, half mark. Sorry, not a half mark. One mark for the equation, Mr. Duick. How far? That's asking me to find a distance. Um, it looks like this time, time is 6. VI, still 0. A still negative 9.8. This is really the same question as the very first question where I said, how far is the cliff to the bottom? Here, it's going to be D equals AT squared over 2. What happened to the VIT? It's 0, so I didn't bother writing it. Negative 9.8, 6 squared over 2. Did you get negative 176.4? Negative 176 meters. And I think I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. If you are ever standing by a cliff and there's nobody beneath you, and you're, because it's kind of fun, you're chucking rocks. If you time how long it takes the rock to hit the ground with your stopwatch on your smartphone, square that number times 10, roughly, and divide by two, you got a pretty good idea of how high the cliff is. You don't even need to include the negative because you want the positive height anyways. A ball is thrown straight up with a velocity of 56 meters per second. How long does it take? Okay, T equals question mark. VI is 56. What's A? 
even on the way up, how can it be negative? Yeah, because on the way up, it's slowing down, which means it's accelerating in the opposite direction of up. Negative. Yep. That's only two things. I need three things to find the fourth. Oh, at the top for a split second, VF is zero. Okay. I think I can use VF equals VI plus AT. Uh, I think I can go T equals the VF would drop down like a domino. We would minus the VI over and divide by A. It's going to be zero minus 56. When I wrote that, I started to get worried because I went, I'm going to get a negative time, and time is positive. But then I went, oh, but then I'm dividing by negative 9.8, so I'll have a negative divided by a negative. I'm positive. 0 minus 56 divided by negative 9.8. And I get 5.71 seconds. Again, one mark for the equation, half mark for the numbers half mark for the answer. What's the maximum height? I guess that's asking me to find D. You could relist everything, but I think in A we were at the top, and in B we're at the top, so I have that data sitting there. Uh, I think I'm going to use D equals VF squared minus VI squared all over 2a. Now you could also use d equals vit plus a half at squared. I'll give you full credit for doing that. The only reason I might not do that is I'm using that answer to find this answer. I might get it wrong. However, let's suppose that you got to b. You couldn't remember this equation and you hadn't solved a, but you knew if you knew time you could do it. On a test, write me a note. Mr. Duick, I can't remember how to solve A, but if I could have got the time, here's how I would have solved D. Show me your work, and I'll give you two out of two for part B. I'll crunch it on my calculator. If I get the same thing as you, even if you started with the wrong data point, your method was fine. I'll give you full credit. So what you're really hearing, I hope, Owen, is don't leave stuff blank. Don't leave stuff blank. Um, it's going to be... 0 squared minus 56 squared all over 2 times negative 9.8. Is this a fraction? More than one thing on the top. Brackets around the top. Divided by 2 times brackets around the bottom. Ooh, did you get exactly 160? That's a total fluke that it worked out even. And that's meters. Now, remember I said you could also use D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. If I'd finished, if this was a test and I finished early, I would quickly go to my calculator and I would go VI times T plus a half times A times T from part A squared. And I'm going to be off a tiny bit because it wasn't exactly 5.71. But I'm pretty close to 160. I'm pretty sure both of those are right. Yay. So this is one of those tests. If you have a chance, check your answers by solving stuff in the other way really quickly on your calculator, on the back of the page, on a scrap piece of paper, whatever. Camille, how many marks was A worth? How many marks was B worth? How many marks is C worth? Why would I do that? It probably means you can do this in your head you already, or you already know the answer. What's the impact velocity? What goes up must come. V final is going to be negative 56 meters per second. By the way, you could also have calculated it. You could have said uh, uh, time, you could have let VI be zero at the top, let it fall down for 5.71 seconds and calculate V final and you would get negative 56, but what goes up must come down. Does that work when you're on a cliff? No, because of course when it falls past you, it's going to go, right when it falls past you, it's traveling its initial velocity, but negative, but it's going to keep speeding up before it hits the ground. But if you're on the ground, it's a great shortcut. How long is the ball in the air for? Two ways to do this. You could go part A, times 2, which would be 5.71 times 2, which, oh, I can do that in my head, uh, 10 plus 11.42. Uh, 11 
Or you could say T equals question mark, VI is 56, VF negative 56, A is negative 9.8, VF minus VI over A, negative 56 minus 56 all over negative 9.8, and you get 11.4 seconds either way. I would have done, since I had done part A, I would use this method. If I hadn't done part A, I would probably do this. Annika, how many marks is E worth? Why? Probably you can do this in your head already. With a, how high were we when we started? On the ground, so zero. How high are we when we finished? On the ground, so. So what's my change in position? What's my displacement? The distance I traveled is all the way up and all the way down, so it's the height times two, but the displacement is zero. Turn the page. Peniel, what two words did I underline in number three? Why would I do that? What change do I have to make if we're straight down here? Did you catch it? What's VI? Negative. As soon as I saw that, I would have put a big negative in front of the four, or I might have gone like this. It's going to be negative 14, something so that I don't accidentally miss that. Picking up on the tricks, I'm organized but lazy. How high is the cliff? Hey, that's D again. VI is negative 14. A is negative 9.8. T is 22. It's going to be D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. It's going to be negative 14 times 22 plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 22 squared. Am I ending up above or below from where I started? If I'm on a clip, I'm expecting a negative displacement here. I won't freak out. Negative 14 times 22 plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 22 squared. Did y'all get negative 2,680? That's a high cliff. What did I say it was? Negative 2,680? And again, because I asked for a height, if you left the negative off, Owen, this gave us a displacement. And I'm really sloppy. I really should be putting the vector sign on there and there. Time is a scalar. Speed is a scalar. It'd be nice if there was a dumb, easy way to remember that speed is a scalar and that v -v -v velocity is the vector. I got nothing. B, not zero. Well, I got VI. Oh, you know what? I can use just all of this stuff here. I can use VF equals VI plus AT. It's just this time VI isn't zero. Negative 14. Oh, if you missed the negative, I would give you 1.5 out of 2. And if you missed the negative, you would have gotten... If you got negative 2,064, I would give you 1.5 out of 2. Okay. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yeah. So if you miss the negative here, I'll also tell you what answer that you'll get. You'll get 1.5 out of 2. Uh, plus negative 9.8 times 22. No squared, Mr. Duick. Negative 14 plus negative 9.8 times 22. You get negative 230. If you miss the negative, we'll call that maxing you would get negative 202, and I would give you 1.5. Okay. Points still being, don't leave stuff blank, and if you get it wrong, you, you, get, you still got 75% on the question, right? Here we go. Number four. Hmm. Hmm. What, George? That usually means that it might be multi-multi-step. Or you might have to find something in order to find something. Okay. Well, they want me to find VF. 
vi, 34, a is negative 9.8. What's D? Nope. So there's careful number one. Yep. Why negative? We're ending up below from where we started. Now, if you missed that, I'll show you what you would have got. But careful. I'm looking for an equation that has a VF, a VI, an A, and a D in it. It's the squared one. The VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Kiana, how to get rid of a squared? So I'll just do that because I'm lazy but organized. So it's going to be inside the square roots 34 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 252. 34 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 252 square root. Did you get 78.1? I hope not, because 78.1 is wrong. This is why I put the careful. There's two hidden implied negatives in here. I know we're traveling down, so even though my calculator gave me the positive square root, I'm going to tell my calculator, uh-uh-uh, I really wanted the negative square root. So VF is going to be negative 78.1. I almost guarantee there's going to be one of those on your test because there's some lovely physics thinking there. Okay. Now, Owen, if you missed that initial negative 252, would you get an answer or would you get an error? You'll get an error when you try and square root. Sometimes you won't, depending on the numbers. Oh, sorry. Sometimes you won't. But here, if you try taking the square root of a negative, you get an error. My calculator says, get real. And it's because I told my calculator I'm accelerating down, but I ended up above from where I started. Get real. And then if you missed this negative, I would take a half mark off. Yep. What did you do? Did you find time first and then work your way backwards and find VF? You did extra work, but that should work. You got the same answer? So what he did is he found time to top where V final was zero, added it to the cliff height, and then he let VI be zero and dropped all the way to the ground. And that's that also works. It's extra work. Have I mentioned organized and lazy yet? Because I am. Okay. Uh, there's also a third way. You could have found all the way to the top. Back to the base of the, back to the top of the cliff, which will be top times two, and then starting here with negative 34 meters per second all the way down. They all work. I usually try and get there in one step instead of three. But yeah, especially if you used your answer button, you'd get exactly the same thing as me. If you or carried if you carried your steps to like five or six sig figs before you did your final work, you'd get bang on with me. Uh, time. See, this is the tricky question where I would love to use this. What's the problem? Why can't I get the t by itself? There's a t and a t squared. Now, if vi was zero dropped, then I can get the t by itself. Or if we're not accelerating, like on the distracted driving little activity, then it's just D equals VT. I can get the T by itself. But here, now, if you want to, you could solve the quadratic and use your quadratic solver, but most of you don't know how to do that. I just found VF, Mr. Duick. It's negative 78.1. So this is one of those times, Aiden, where I have to use a previous answer to find an answer. I can go T equals VF minus VI over A. I can go negative 78.1 minus, what was VI? 34 all over negative 9.8. Do I still have, nope, I don't have that answer there. 34 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 252 square root of that. So normally I would have still had that sitting on my calculator and so I would have gone negative answer button 
because I'm lazy and it's more organized. Minus 34 divided by negative 9.8. But if you didn't have that as your answer button, you would type negative 78.1 or negative 78.07 or whatever. Did you get 11.4 uh, seconds? No, yes? Yeah. Mac, did you get that? So what you found then was, so here's the cliff. You found that time. You could also then find this time by letting V final be zero v and add them together, and that works. I don't teach that method because, have I mentioned lately, I'm organized but lazy. I don't use a two-step method if I can get there in a one-step, but that would work. So you probably just found that. That's my guess. Ooh, the slide question. Now, we did this in the notes, and if you had to go back and check your notes and then you did this, that would be okay. But if you were, I don't know how to do this, and you didn't go back and check your notes and you left it blank, that's not learning. What did we do? We found for this one, it was better to break it up into on the slide and on the ground. And Accelerating from rest, we said that's a VI on the slide. That four meters is on the slide. That time is on the slide. Hey, you know what? I know three things. I can find stuff on this. I can find anything I want to on the slide. They want me to find how fast the child hits the ground. You know what? That's V final over here. So... I think I'm going to use D equals bracket VI plus VF times T over 2 times by 2 divide by T. And then I think VF is going to be 2 times D over T minus VI minus that inside the brackets. Although what was VI? Uh, by the way, this would also work for you on a slide if you're a grown-up going on a playground slide. If you estimate how long the slide is and you time how long you're on it, you can figure out how fast you're hitting the ground. Just don't push little kids out of the way. Is it 3.2? Mr. Duick, we're on the way down. Should that be negative? If you chose to call that negative, I'm fine with that. Here, because it made the math easier, Technically, that four is you're below slanty sideways, but you're below from where you started. I could have called that negative, and I would have got a negative velocity. But it was made the math easier to just say, I'll call it positive. What's the child's acceleration in stopping? Okay, well now we're on the ground, so I'll do it on this side. They want me to find, geez, do it. A. Oh, in stopping. I guess V final is zero. Oh, this here, nice try, Mr. Duick, 0.25 meters. I think that's the distance. I only know two things. I need three things to find the fourth. I can't do this. Or can I? Yeah? Oh, my initial velocity when I hit the ground is my final velocity at the bottom of the slide because that's right where I transition. So you're telling me, oh, cool. So I can use VF squared minus VI squared all over 2D. I can use 0 squared minus 3.2 squared all over 2 times 0.25. And I think when we did this in the notes, I showed you how if you make D bigger by bending your knees more, the acceleration is smaller. And that's what toddlers are figuring out when they're four or five years old and starting to jump off things. They're learning, I can't land stiff knee. It hurts if I bend and tuck easier.
negative. Oh, when we hit the ground, are we slowing down? So I can think of that as negative. Or you could have let up be positive and down be negative, in which case this velocity is actually negative, and you would get a positive acceleration because up is positive. I don't, this is why when you, when you ask me when do I let it be negative and when do I let it be positive, it's kind of vague. I let it be negative when it's convenient and I decide that at the beginning of the question and I go. But if it's just a magnitude, I'm kind of don't care. Uh, 20 point, negative 20.5. If you said positive 20.5, I'm fine with that. How many G's is that? Round two. I divided by 10 instead of dividing by 9.8. So around two. You know what? That's like, that's like carrying somebody piggyback. Somebody of the same mass as you piggyback. That's two G's. Doable. But this kid probably should have bent their knees a little bit more. Ooh. How many marks is this one, Deegan? That probably means you're going to have to find something in order to find something, or it's multi-step, or you're finding more than one thing. How many marks was the slide question, by the way? Oh, two each. So half mark for half mark for the equation, half mark for the numbers, half mark for the answer. How did we do this? We said for this one, it was better. to break the trip up into two chunks while you're still coasting, let's say on cruise control and haven't hit the brakes yet, and then braking. And I said it's worth listing the data in each section. So traveling at 15, I think that's VI before we hit the brakes. 0.5 seconds to react. Have they hit the brakes yet in that point? So T is 0.5. Steps on the brakes and slows at 8 meters per second squared. That's while braking. What mistake did I just make? Yeah. Now, I might be nice on a test and actually say slows at negative 8. I might put the negative in there for you. But I know at least once I didn't. I don't think I did it every time you're slowing down. I want you to make the same mistake over and over. But I know at least one time I think I said slows down and didn't put the negative in. Maybe not. I might have made it a little easier with the quarterly system because I'm having to go fast. I can't remember. I typed it up on the weekend. Oh, stopping. How many things do I have under coasting? Two. How many things do I have under braking? Doesn't work. Aiden. Okay, cruise control. Now I know three things, so I can find this distance. I think I would use D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, VIT. So 15 times 0.5, I can even do that in my head, 7.5 meters. I'll call that distance one. What about here? Oop. Yeah. Oh, because I'm coasting, I'm still traveling 15 meters per second right when I hit the brakes. So you're saying VI is 15. I can find D2. I can use VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A. 0 squared minus 15 squared all over 2 times negative 8. Hey, it's nice. I'll get a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive, which is good because the car is traveling what I think of as forward. Negative 8, Mr. Duick. Do you get 14.0625? And since this is not my final answer, I'll keep some extra sig figs because I'm not done yet. Now I'll add that to the 7.5, and then I'll go to three sig figs in my final, final answer. So D total is 7.5 plus 14.0625, and I get... 21.6 meters. If you got that, I would give you four out of four. Otherwise, I would give you 
a half mark for that equation, a half mark for finding the 7.5, that gets you 1, a half mark for that equation, a half mark for finding that, that gets you 2 out of 4. I would give you 1 mark if you knew to add them, and then 1 mark for the answer. Something like that. I don't know. And then I would also say, kids, stop playing in the road. Jeez. Pardon me? Fifty. Well, let's see. 15 meters per second times... That's 54. That's, a, that's not exactly a speed that you would do on a cul-de-sac. That's probably... It's probably a subdivision road, but it's like a double lane, fairly biggish one. I don't know. Can you give yourself a lovely score on this quiz then out of Spark? Is it out of 32? There you go. If you need to lawyer with me, now is the time.